I'm in a hotel in Amsterdam. Let's talk about worker. <laughs> Now, Worker is a tool that you can use to build applications that use Docker. It works like this. I check my code into GitHub, then GitHub sends a message to Worker to say there's new code available. Worker then pulls this code change in and begins building it. It uses a file called worker.yaml. That's stored in the root of the GitHub project. This file describes how to build the application and all of the steps that's going to be needed to be taken to get our project built. In my code, you can see that I first run npm install, as this is a Node.js application. And this command in a Node application installs all of the dependencies. Once it's ready, we run npm test. Now this executes all of the test commands in my application. This application is built using Oracle Jet, which is a single page web framework for producing like, WYSI charts and sleek enterprise apps for web and mobile. Now to build an Oracle Jet application, I'm going to need to first install the Oracle command line in the Oracle Jet sorry command line interface. So I run this line of code, which npm install dash g, which means global Oracle uh, dash ojet hyphen cli command line interface, and this installs Oracle Jet globally inside the container which I'm building in. Which means on the next line, I can call ojet build which will build my application and put the complete project into an output folder called web. That's just the default name for the web uh, sort of artifacts that OJet, OJet are going to build. In the final steps, it's going to copy this single web folder into the worker output directory. This means that those files are going to be available if I want to use them in the next step. So to recap, I check in some code, it uses the worker.yaml file which is in the root of the project, it runs through some build steps and finally it outputs the files, the built files, to a specific directory. Now I only needed Node to build my project, but to run the website I don't need Node. Now that it's built, my entire application is just static HTML, JavaScript and CSS files. So rather than using this container I just built, for my Oracle, like I needed to build the actual Oracle Jet application, I'm going to throw that container away and create a new container. To do that in Worker, I'm going to create another pipeline. Now this new pipeline is like a new set of steps, and it's going to build a new container, copy the files into that, and then I'm going to upload that container to Docker Hub. Docker Hub is a registry where you can store your containers for later, later use. There are lots of different registries, but this time we're using Docker Hub. Now to tell Worker to start with our new Docker base image, I'm going to change this box to something a little smaller. Since I only need to serve static web files, I'm going to use a web server container base image that is nice and small. So I'm going to use this ID Nginx Alpine. Now I have the files from the last pipeline. My Nginx serves, or this, this container, this Nginx container, serves from a specific location. So I need to copy those files into the correct location on the container. To do that, I can simply execute some bash commands. First, I'm going to delete the files in the destination using the command here, rm-rf, slash user, slash share, slash Nginx, slash HTML, slash star. Next, I'm going to move everything that's in the web folder into the destination folder by using the move command, or mv command. Passing web slash star as the first parameter and slash user share nginx slash html as the second parameter. This will copy the files from the first location, the first parameter, into the second location, the second parameter. Lastly, I'm going to push this container into Docker Hub. To do this, I'm going to use a built in step called internal slash docker dash push. Now we provide this command with the repository in Docker Hub. A username and a password. The URL to the Docker registry that I'm using, in this case Docker Hub. I also give the container image a tag so that I can identify it later. I've used this internal variable called um, worker underscore git underscore commit. This variable um, is going to make it easier to know which git command built the container 
that I've, uh, when I look into Docker Hub and look at the different tags. I also provide a command, nginx global daemon off, which will be called when the container is started. So there we have it. I built some code, ran some tests, built a smaller container with only the output build files in it, and then I've pushed this container over to Docker Hub, where everyone in my team could pull down this built image. Every time I check in code to GitHub, it's going to rebuild this container and place it in the cloud for me. If I want to take this further, I could add another step that sends a Slack notification that the build is ready. It could send the container to a production system maybe, like Oracle Cloud Container Service, or maybe it could alert Kubernetes cluster that a new version of the container is ready and deploy it into production for me. With Worker, you can create simple or complex build and release pipelines that get your code into production quickly and consistently. That's it for now. Join me next time in Dubai when I'll be talking about serverless computing. Yeah.